Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're going to be looking at adding controller supports to your games using Game Maker Studio. So, first of all, let's have a look at the game we have right now. Uh, it's a simple platformer game with two objects, a block object and a player object. And as you can see, uh, the player can move around and jump. A very simple game just to demo controller support. So, let's have a look at the code we have. Inside the player event, we have some variables in the create event. These uh, have the horizontal speed, the jump speed, gravity, and vertical speed. Uh, pretty standard stuff when working with platformer games. And then in the step event, there is some input code over here. And all the rest is uh, platform movement code with collision checking. Uh, you can look through it and uh, try to understand it. Parts of it are slightly complicated, just as this for loop over here. However, it's just a, it's a fairly simple platformer engine uh, if you don't have any slopes or anything, which uh, you're free to use if you want. Now, this project I have made available in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and download it in order to work along with me. So, first of all, we're going to look at this, uh, create, uh, this um, input code over here. What we have for the horizontal variable is the right key check minus the left key check, which means that if you go to the right, uh, the value will be positive one. And if you are pressing on the left button, the value will be negative one. If you press both buttons, the value will be zero, which makes it really, really convenient uh, to move your objects left or right. Uh, the up variable is just gonna be our up key on the keyboard. Now, what we want to do is have this game be able to work both on with your keyboard or with the controller. So the first step is to move all of our con keyboard code to its new object. So let's press OK here and create a new object. This object we will call obj underscore keyboard and add a create event. Let's add a piece of code. And in here, we're just going to define two variables, hor horizontal or hor zero and up zero, the same variables we had inside our player object. We can add, now add a uh, step begin event such that uh, our input code will happen just before our player updates. All we're going to have to write is exactly the same code or equals keyboard check vk underscore write minus keyboard check vk underscore left. And I'll make this uh, box a little bigger so you can see the whole code, like so. Now we need to do the same for the up variable. We're going to write up equals keyboard check vk underscore up. And that's it for our keyboard object. Really simple stuff. So we can press OK here. And inside the create event of our player, we will create the object in order to make it available for the player object to use. So we're going to add a new piece of code, call it input object using the triple forward slash and write keyboard equals instance create zero, zero, the position doesn't matter, and our object obj keyboard. And again, I'll make this text box bigger so you can see the whole code. So all we're doing is creating our keyboard object. Let's press OK. Now, let's quickly test to see if our object works as intended. So in here, instead of writing, instead of having our input code, we're going to write keyboard, the instance we just created, dot horn. And here we're going to write the same thing, keyboard, but dot up. So this is going to end up being the same game that we had before. If we press play and use the arrow keys, we'll be able to move our character around. So now let's add gamepad support. Um, rather than putting all our code inside the player event, let's create a new object to handle it. And we're going to call it obj underscore gamepad. Now, just like the keyboard object, uh, we need the two variables. So, hor equals zero, up equals zero as well. 
And now we can go inside the begin step event and start using gamepad code. So first we need to update our horizontal movement and we will want to use the upper left stick, uh, the horizontal axis of our left stick on the gamepad. So we're going to write hor equals gamepad underscore axis value and we want to use device zero. So for this whole tutorial, we're going to be using device zero, which is fine if you're only using a single player game. If you want to make a multiplayer game, you have to write some code that will handle all the different inputs. And then the axis index is going to be gp underscore axis left horizontal, so LH. Now, in order to see all the different constants for the different buttons and axes on your gamepad, uh, simply hover over this GP axis LH and press F12. Now you can see uh, all the different uh, gamepad constants uh, and diagram to show you where they are, which is really quite useful if you can't quite remember the name of an axis or of a button. So now we're going to do the same thing for the up value. However, we're going to be using a button. In fact, if we go to our uh, diagram over here, we want to use this green button, the A button on an Xbox controller, X button on a PS4 controller. It's going to be our jump button. So all we have to do is do gamepad underscore check, no, button check, button check, again, device zero, and the button index is GP for gamepad underscore face one. And again, this is all we need to use our gamepad. Press OK. And now in order to check if everything works correctly, let's simply go inside a player object. Inside the input objects, we're going to say gamepad is equal to instance create 0, 0, obj underscore gamepad. And now inside of the step event, Rather than using keyboard, we're going to write gamepad. Press uh, the green button and play. And now the keyboard won't work anymore. However, you'll be able to control your object using the gamepad, just like so. And the A button allows you to jump and the uh, joystick allows you to move left and right. Now, if you look at, your, at the screen right now, you'll see that um, I'm moving to the left slightly, even though I'm not touching the joystick on my gamepad. This is because there isn't any dead zone set, and so any t minute little movement, even if it's just because the spring isn't quite right, will cause your object to move. Now this is a really simple fix. You can go inside the create event of your gamepad and write gamepad underscore set axis dead zone and we're going to use device zero once again. The dead zone is going to be 0 0.15. That, that's a good value. It's a nice and safe value. Even pretty damaged controllers shouldn't exceed that value. Uh, so it's a pretty safe bet if you don't want to make your uh, controllers customizable. And now if you play the game again, there is no movement. Uh, in fact, you can start moving the joystick just a tiny bit and your object won't quite move, which is exactly what you want in case people have damaged joysticks. Now comes the part where we get both objects working at the same time. This will require a new script because if we look inside our player object, um, we want both, we want the highest value from gamepad and keyboard to be used for the horizontal speed. So if, um, if we have the gamepad uh, pressing right and the keyboard pressing right, we want the object to move right. However, if our gamepad is a bit to the left, but our keyboard is to the right, it still makes sense to go right because the keyboard has kind of a higher value of one. The problem comes when we have negative values. Say we have the gamepad at uh, minus one, uh, or, the key or let's say the keyboard at minus one, but the gamepad at 0 0.1 or something like so, the maximum value will be 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.1 from the gamepad. This is not what we need. So we need to create a new script called absolute max. It will take the maximum absolute value from all of our different values. So 
create a new script, call it ABS Max, and we're going to write a short description for it. Amp Max uh, will take any number of values, and we're going to write a short description that says returns the value with greatest, let's make this a bit bigger, absolute value. And this script will be quite simple. Uh, what we want to do is first set our maximum absolute value to be our first value. So we can say var um, max abs, max underscore abs equals argument zero. And now we want to loop through all of our remaining arguments. Now it's quite noteworthy that this um, this will not work if your argument count is zero. That's something you have to remember. So we're going to write a for loop, say var i equals zero. i is smaller than argument underscore count and increments i. Inside we're going to say that if the absolute value of argument i is greater than the absolute value of our current maximum value, <coughs> then we want to set our new maximum absolute value to be uh, the current argument. At the end of the script, we simply have to return max underscore abs. So, just to recap, this will go through each of our arguments and if the absolute value, the new absolute value of this current argument is greater than the current absolute value, we update the maximum absolute value. Now, what we can do is go inside our player object and have our horizontal value be equal to abs max of gamepad.horizontal and keyboard dot horizontal uh, yeah like so and same with the up value amps max of gamepad dot up keyboard dot up now if we press play we should be able to both use our keyboard and our gamepad no matter if you press right on your keyboard and left on your gamepad uh, that is unless you spell keyboard wrong over here you should be able to use your gamepad and your keyboard and the experience should be somewhat seamless so I can now use my gamepad move up and down and so on and I can use my keyboard as well what's great is that I can move with the keyboard and jump with the gamepad for example it's all working together uh, pretty uh, seamlessly it seems it, nothing seems to act weird at all. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to add uh, more input types, you can always add more objects and add them to the Amps Max script. Um, if you want to add more buttons, you just add them to the gamepad object and to the keyboard object and so on. Using this different method of having different objects truly really structures your code really nicely. So I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please, please give it a like. If you haven't, well, there is a dislike button and you can leave a comment down in the description below if you have any questions or anything. And I'll see you guys next time.